Hi, my name is Matt Sosman, and I'm a security architect at Microsoft, and I'd like to talk to you about Microsoft Cloud App Security, Microsoft's CASB, or Cloud Access Security Broker product. So let's go ahead and get started. Our CASB solution uh, really spans across our four pillars of identity and access management, threat protection, information protection, and security management. These are the four pillars that really help to define Microsoft's security story, if you will. And what's interesting is cloud app security spans across all four of those and even dabbles in the infrastructure security space as well. Now you can find out more about these different solutions and these pillars by checking out my YouTube channel and going through the videos there and my blog at www.mattsosman.com. Now, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on these new videos I put out regarding Microsoft Security Solutions. So let's jump into really the why behind this. You know, while we, while we see all these different threats that are out there, um, one of the interesting threats is what's actually just happening inside the organization right now. And I always like to start the conversation with some insights that we have about the use of cloud apps and SaaS apps inside organizations. And so the data shows us that there's more than a thousand cloud services out there that are regularly used by an end user. And that more than half of those are actually unmanaged and go unmonitored by IT. And that's, that's a really scary thing, especially when I consider you know, the average enterprise might have a thousand cloud apps out there and how many of those does IT really have control over? Could they be storing your own customer's data in those apps? Could they be storing um, intellectual property in those apps? And if those apps get compromised, you know, uh, leaked credentials or attacked and, and, and stolen um, data, what could happen there? That's really scary stuff. And so when I think about um, what can we do about it, well, that's where the CASB uh, type of device or product or service comes into play. And so this actually helps you to, to really police those non-monitored and unmanaged cloud apps that are out there. And so it's estimated that by 2020, 85% of those large enterprises out there will actually be using CASB. And that's from um, Gartner and some other uh, security companies out there that have done some analysis. And so this is really interesting. And so Microsoft um, we've made some investments here around Microsoft Cloud App Security, our CASB, to help mitigate some of these risks. Now, when you think about a CASB, it's, it's, it's a capability of many different things. I could spend several hours with you, probably all day, going through what, the, what in the world MCAS can do. Uh, there's so much, but when you think about those top US, uh, CASB use cases, I really think about going out there and discovering shadow IT, discovering what are those apps that are in use in the environment that I didn't know of, the, un the unsanctioned apps, if you will. And then going out there and, and out of those unsanctioned apps, sanctioning the ones that I approve for business use. And that means governing how they're used and making sure data inside those apps are encrypted and protected and controlled and monitored and audited for compliance in real time. And then also, not only the data, but also then responding to cloud threats in those apps. Maybe it's cloud ransomware, maybe it's you know identity. It, it could be a lot of different things, malware. And so that's really one of the top use cases here, or some of the use cases of a CASB, but it goes way beyond that. When you start to think about how do we get the discovery of shadow IT, of course, we can upload firewall logs, but we also have a capability with MCAS to integrate with Defender ATP, and I'll talk more about that later on. Um, we also can act as a reverse proxy, so I can actually control the session when you access these apps. So if I don't want you to download something or I want to block, cut, copy, paste, that's doable. And then I can also monitor the, um, the cloud threats as well. We'll talk more about that. So let's get into Microsoft Cloud App Security. This thing is Again, it, it's, it's many different capabilities. And I think when you look at this visualization here, you could probably see what I'm talking about. Everything from endpoint detection and response to data loss prevention to ac identity and access management, all the way down to just you know information protection, the list goes on and on. Now, the cool thing about Microsoft Cloud App Security is that not only does it work with Office 365 and Azure, but it also works with third-party apps as well. And you can see some logos up here that we interact with. 
I think that just expands the value and really turns us from a product into a solution that can solve real business problems. And just here's some of the, the featured apps out there that we support, and here's some of the customers out there that are actually using cloud app security. Now we did have some recent announcements here and um, you can go through this. So I encourage you to pause the video or subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll keep you up to date on these announcements. But here we got some interesting announcements recently on some integrations and some additional capabilities. So feel free to pause and review that. When it comes to key features, we do maintain kind of a change log, if you will, at aka.ms slash new in MCAS. You can see that down at the bottom. But go ahead and pause this video and take a look at some of these key feature releases. There's some really exciting stuff that's in here that um, I'm super giddy about. And we'll geek out about that stuff in another video. Okay, so let's talk about the first thing of discovering and assessing the risk of shadow IT. Now we all know shadow IT is a problem, but some of you may be wondering what in the world is shadow IT, Matt? That's where users are out there spinning up their own cloud apps because they don't want to use your approved apps. So to give you an example, I may be using, or I may have purchased OneDrive within my uh, organization and I want everybody to use it, but some users may find it too difficult to use or it doesn't align to their business processes or they weren't trained on it, you know, name the reason why. And so they're out here creating accounts in a third party storage service like maybe Box but that's unapproved and you have no idea that they're doing that. That's shadow IT. And so the idea is we wanna go out there and discover all of those, those unapproved apps that are running. We wanna identify the risk levels of those apps, right? How, just, how risky or not so risky are they? We wanna make sure that they're compliant or if they're not compliant, you know, take a note on that. We wanna take a look at how often are they actually used? Is it seldom or are they being frequently used? And then we want to start to apply some governance to it and monitor those apps. That's what our CASB solution is all about. And so when you go through this, you will see a dashboard like this. And I have some videos out there on my channel. Just do a quick search and I do a deep dive on this. But this is where you can get kind of an executive dashboard of, okay, I got 305 apps in my environment. They're running in some of these different um, uh, data centers overseas, you can see that in the lower right hand corner, and I could see which of the top apps here out of 305, what's the top 15 that it discovered. This is really interesting. Now Microsoft will catalog our discovery of these apps, um, or rather we will take the discovery of these apps and we will actually uh, cross-reference against a catalog of apps that we have to the tune of 16,000. Actually, I think that number is, is lower, it's, um, or it's much higher now, that's kind of an old number. And we do a scan of those apps and we evaluate based on 70 plus uh, security compliance risk factors. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. And then from here you can block, you can approve, you can even monitor. One of my favorite features here, if any one of these or companies that run these apps, if they have a data breach and they go public with that data breach, well, MCAS can be alerted of that and then it can alert you. I think that's really interesting. Now, what's interesting too here is that traditionally I have to upload firewall logs and, and tap this thing into my network proxy, my firewall and, and network proxy, but now we have done some innovation with Defender ATP. Remember, Defender ATP, that's our EDR solution to Microsoft, and it's also antivirus and many different other things, and that's running on the Windows 10 endpoints built into the operating system. It's agentless. And so it's sending telemetry, so all I gotta do is just turn it on. And that's going to be sending data back to cloud app security. So if I'm not behind the firewall and I'm working from home or I'm at a, at a, a coffee shop or wherever, staying at a hotel, I can still uh, be able to collect that data from those end users. Now, one of my favorite features here around discovery is not only understanding what apps are people using, but tapping into Azure Active Directory and seeing, okay, from an identity perspective, who has consented to using their identity with some of these risky apps. So for example, uh, we have Wonderlist here, uh, kind of ironic, but we have Wonderlist um, uh, expanded here. And you can see that we have users in the environment that have consented their identity to Wonderlist, meaning that they can log into Wonderlist with their Azure AD credentials. And now Wonderlist has the ability to sign in and read the profile and, and uh, perhaps do other things. And so that's marked as kind of a medium permission level meaning there's probably some risk there. 
and I might want to review that. I could write a, a rogue OAuth application, and maybe it's, a, maybe it's a, um, a calendar tool that's in Outlook, right? And when you sign into it with your Azure AD credentials, it really encrypts all of your email, or it goes through and encrypts all your files. And we've even seen some examples out there on social media of that. Well, this allows you to look for stuff like that and immediately block it, which I think is pretty cool. So let's get into discovery and, and go through this. So I talked about doing this with Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection. Here's the admin console for ATP, for Defender ATP. And all I have to do is just check the on button, make sure I meet the prerequisites, and then immediately it's gonna start sending telemetry. And here I can see, uh, if I click on the machines tab, I can see all the machines that are sending telemetry. Um, now here's a list of those apps and uh, what apps we discovered in the environment, in this case using Defender ATP as the discovery mechanism instead of the firewall. And I could see these apps are assigned a score on a scale of one to 10, one being the most risky, 10 being the least risky. Um, you know, this allows me to kind of make that determination if this is something I wanna go investigate further. Now, if I expand on one of these apps and we'll use this one as an example with a score of four, it's, it's risky. So let's take a look at this. Now, Microsoft will do a scan of the app and we'll, we'll catalog that scan of that app. And so when we discover a near environment, we reference that catalog entry. And if it has a green check mark, it means it supports that security capability or compliance capability. And if it has a red X, it does not support it. So based on the number of red X's and green check marks, that's how we uh, assign that overall score on a scale of one to 10. Now you can adjust these and I'll show you here in just a minute. But what I wanna call out here is not just security capabilities, but also kind of look down there at the bottom, compliance, so things like HIPAA and FINRA and even GDPR, and I imagine CCPA at some point and so on and so forth, that makes it really interesting. Now here's where I can adjust those metrics and the weighting of those. So if one of these is more important to me than the other, customized for my environment, I, I can do that. Now, if I come across an app here that I just, I wanna not allow to my environment, I can tag it as being unsanctioned. And when I do that, I can generate a block script for my firewall, but we've also done some innovation here where it could actually block it on Defender ATP endpoints. More on that in another video. Now, I also have an ability to create this executive report. It's about 25 pages, and it tells me, here's the recommendations from Microsoft on how to mitigate the, the, the findings here. Here's all of the findings. It's really good information. So for my consulting friends out there, this is a great deliverable for your customers. And for my IT pro friends out there, this is a great report to show to your management. Now, I'm a geek, I love data, and so when I think about what else I could do with this, hey, let's pipe it over to Power BI, and let's do some slicing and dicing of the data and customize this. I think this is really interesting. Data is everything. It's all about how you analyze it. So here's a really good example of sending this over to Power BI and doing some more advanced customized analysis. Okay, so I talked about um, OAuth and how we can go out and, and discover and, and actually block those, those risky applications that people are using using OAuth where they're actually signing into it with their Azure AD credentials. And um, I, you know, I can go through and, and mitigate that. And then I, here I can see you know, which of those apps have high permissions, but maybe nobody's using them. Well, if that's the case, then I can go through and just block it. All right. Now here's a case of, of an app wonder list, and maybe I wanna go through and, and block this or ban the ability for you to log in with your Azure AD credentials into say wonder list. Well, if I click on the little uh, stop sign signal over there on the right side, that indicates I want to ban it, and then I can actually send a, a notification to these users. And when I click on ban, now it's integrated with Azure AD, and it does not allow anybody to log into Wonderlist using their Azure AD credentials, thus improving my posture and lowering my risk. Okay, I know what you're wondering. So the shadow, I think, I, shadow IT thing, Matt, how do we discover the data? Um, it's actually pretty simple. It's one of three ways, or I could do all three. One, I could do a snapshot in time. So if I'm doing this as an assessment, or I'm just kicking the tires on it, I can take a copy of my firewall or proxy log, upload it to Cloud App Security, and that's a snapshot in time. The second way is I can create one of these log collectors, basically a syslog server, 
And then I can send all of my firewall and web proxy logs to that, even my sim logs to that. And then that will be sent over to Cloud App Security and we'll parse through it and create the dashboard. And then the third way, my favorite way, and this is new, probably in about the last six months to a year, is using Defender ATP. If you're running Windows 10, this is built into the operating system. All you need is an enterprise license to, to light it up or, or a number of different ways you can get that license, but light up the license. And then now not only can perform endpoint detection and response, behavioral analytics for threat detection and antivirus and all those sexy things, it can also send um, network telemetry from that endpoint to cloud app security. Today's day and age, right? We have corporate offices, but people work from home. People are traveling. People are not always in the office. So this allows you to monitor shadow IT on all of those employee endpoints, no matter where they are, as long as it's Windows 10. And there are some prerequisites. Um, I have another video that goes through this. Okay, let's talk about protecting data. Um, now, this is part of a broader story here at Microsoft. We have many different information protection capabilities. Now, the cool thing about this is it allows us to crawl through data in a cloud app. So let me give you an example of that. If the data is in Office 365, we can crawl through it, look for keywords, look for um, different tidbits of that data, and then automatically apply policy to it. Or if it's in a third-party app like Box, I can do the same thing. Really cool stuff. Now, if, I, if I'm using an endpoint um, DLP solution that's maybe running on-premises, then we do have some extensibility there that we can integrate with that with Cloud App Security and apply DLP policies. I could be alerted whenever somebody violates a policy. There's a lot of capability here. Now, here's a, a screenshot of what this looks like from the admin portal. I can go through and see all the files that are being interacted with in my environment. And here you can see, I can see Box and OneDrive. Um, so I have one single visibility for all of this, but here's these files. Looks like we have some policy violations and it looks like um, these files have been labeled. So European customer data, maybe it has a GDPR label to it, which means that it's encrypted. Um, here's a URL to that file. Okay, we've matched a policy. The cool thing about this is not only are we alerting you to this stuff, but we could also include automatic remediation. That's more on that in a minute, but that's really the valuable part about this. Um, we've got some built-in sensitive information types. I refer to them as templates. Uh, so what, we know what a credit card number looks like. We have all the regex built out for that or PII. But you can always create your own, which is the cool part about this. You can even do document fingerprinting with this. And of course, there's integration with Azure information protection so I can span this across the enterprise. Now, here's what the policy looks like when I go to create this. So here's an example. If I didn't choose inspection method, that's where I could specify the regex or the keyword or the document fingerprint or whatever I want. And then I can apply governance actions. So to any of these apps I have integrated here, and you can see them listed, I can go down to apply classification label, select the label for Azure Information Protection. And then now if we find data that contains, let's say, a credit card number, then let's apply the financial label. Or if we find data that is maybe confidential to, to the company, you know, let's apply the appropriate label. Maybe it's intellectual property, so on and so forth. Guys and gals, the important part about this is that not only is it in Microsoft's um, Office 365 and Azure products, but it's also across third party. So I have a single place for data governance. So again, that's, that's the idea here. So here's another scenario. I have, a, I have a, a file, I upload it to a cloud app, third party or first party. Based on the content in the file, we automatically apply a classification label, which means we automatically encrypt the file. Then the user, they try to share that file externally. But when they try to do that, they get blocked. And then the admin gets an alert and we provide automatic remediation and you look like a rock star and you save the day. Okay, so what does this look like in real life? Well. To turn this on, um, you could in either integrate this with your on-premises DLP solution, or we can provide uh, built-in integration with Azure Information Protection. And if I check this box here, that provides the automatic integration. That's it. Once I do that, I can then comb through my files here, create some filters, create some customized reports. Um, you get the idea, but this, this is a really awesome capability. I do have another video out there where I go into this in more depth. Uh, here's what one of the policies look like. So um, we're creating a filter here. We're saying, okay, access level is public. So is the file published externally, if you will? 
And if it is, and it's in uh, you know, Box and G Suite, and the users are part of these two different groups, then uh, let's comb, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And let's comb through the data. If we find an EU, a European Union debit card number based on our regex and our template, and we have this amount of confidence, then let's apply one of those governance actions I talked about before, such as applying a classification label, thus not only labeling it, but also encrypting it and protecting it. Okay, that's pretty cool. I have other videos on that, but let's, let's keep going here. Let's talk about real-time information protection. Man, do I get excited about this. So this is our ability to, uh, to basically proxy traffic through cloud app security on its way to and from that cloud app and take control of that session. So what I mean by that is, check this out. Up in the address bar of the screenshot, we have us2.cas.ms. That means this traffic is being proxied through cloud app security. Now, when you do that, I can then apply a number of different policies down here in the lower left. So let's say, for example, and I'm, I'm a fan of the Kansas City Chiefs. So yesterday on Sunday, when I was watching that championship game, which by the way, we won, we're going to the Super Bowl. I'm really excited about that. Let's talk about it in the comments. But when I was at home watching that game, over halftime, I picked up my personal computer. It's not managed by IT. I log into, let's say, Teams or G Suite or Box or any of these third-party apps, and I want to get some work done. Well, because I'm coming in from a non-managed device, we control the session. We say, hey, you're not allowed to download that data. Hey, you're not allowed to copy and, and paste in sensitive information into an IM and Teams. Hey, you're not allowed to print. That's the amount of power that we have here. This is amazing. So how does this work? Well, it's integrated with Azure Active Directory Conditional Access, which opens up all of the possibilities on how to, on how to do this. There's a million and one different configurations here. Now, let me walk you through what that means. You can come back and pause this later if you wanna look at some of those slides. Remember, conditional access is an if-then statement. So we have a number of conditions here. So let's say every day when I go to log in to my email, if all of a sudden my identity has been detected as having some risk associated with it, maybe the credentials are up for sale on the dark web or I'm coming in from a non-managed device or whatever, we could then assign some session risk. So based on the risk of that session, we can then maybe require MFA, of course, but we could also limit access to that app. So block cut, copy, paste, block downloads, block uploads, block printing, so on and so forth. That's one example. The other example, I'm using a non-managed device at home or an airport kiosk. I don't know who does that anymore, but hey, every now and then I do see it. Um, when I log in, limit access. If I'm a contractor, limit access. Hey, if my identity is up for sale on the dark web, limit access. Actually, I probably want to block it. But you get the idea, right? There's a number of different combinations here. So one of our favorite ones that probably makes the most sense and something that I would start with as low-hanging fruit is let's prevent download of sensitive data from an unmanaged device. So take that example yesterday. I'm watching the Chiefs game. I'm on my personal laptop. It's not managed. If I open up you know, Google Drive or Teams or Box or any of these cloud apps, and I try to download sensitive data from those sites, well, once it's on my personal computer, it's gone forever, right? Well, not anymore, because now I can block the download of that. Okay, so my user's identity, it checks out, but my device is unmanaged, and so when I log in, Cloud App Security sees that, we assign a level of risk to the session, we then proxy that traffic through Cloud App Security, and then from there, we're able to then block that app, or sorry, block that download from that app. So it's as simple as that. That's just one example. I would love to hear from you all watching this. What are some examples you could think of? Hey, let me know in the comments. I'll lab it up and I'll do another video on it. It'll be a lot of fun. And you can take that back to your organization. You can look like a rock star. So what does this look like? Well, let me show you a demo of this. So first off, we're gonna create a policy known as a session policy in Cloud App Security. And you can see I have a number of templates here I could choose from. And I also have some control types I could choose from. And then I can create a filter here. So, okay, so anytime you send a message in Teams or you send a Salesforce message or a Slack message, that's interesting, or a workplace from Facebook or whatever it may be, maybe that's part of our filter. So only apply this when maybe you send a Teams message. You get the idea, possibilities are endless. I can do a scan of the data. So if I'm trying to send that top secret formula to my intellectual property, you know, maybe deny that. 
alert me, block it. So I have to go through and create that policy. But now let's take a look at the end user experience and what that looks like. Well, you could see over here, let's back up. You could see over here, she's asking a question. Hey, I need to troubleshoot your, your issue here. Give me your credentials. Okay, here's my username. But then when they try to type in their password, eliminate one, two, three, boom, that's blocked. So it looks like it's trying to send, it actually failed. And then we immediately intercepted that in real time. And that's happening from any device. It's not an agent at all. It's being able to proxy that session through MCAS and control it. Frankly, folks, that's pretty awesome. All right, here's another use case. I'm logging into uh, Workplace by Facebook and we're immediately letting you know that, hey, this session's being monitored. Hey, you could turn this off too, but uh, we're letting you know. And you can see up in the address bar that we indeed are proxying this through Cloud App Security. Okay, so we're monitoring the session. So down here in the lower right-hand corner, I'm gonna send an IM to somebody. Hey, can you share your credentials? I don't know who would be asking me that, but Sylvia, for some reason, needs my credentials to troubleshoot. Okay, here's my username. Here's my password, Blueberry1. But when I hit enter, just like we saw in Teams, boom, it fails, and then I can see it's been blocked. Now that gets audited in the audit log and Cloud App Security as a violation. You get an alert on it, you can be notified on it, you can even kick off a flow. Amazing. Let's take a look at that one more time here. So again, I'm gonna send a message here to Sylvia. And when I send that message, I can then see that block happen in real time. So bear with me here, let's just play this for a minute. I have an issue with logging into Outlook. All right, Aldo, so happy to help. Can you share your credentials? Yeah, sure, why not? I'm just a, a end user, I'm in a hurry. So my email is aldo at katoso.com and boom, here's my password. Now watch what happens. He types it in and when he hits, hits enter, boom, fails to send and the action is blocked. It gets audited, it gets alerted, you get notified, and you save the day. How awesome is that? Let's take a look at this from Box, another example. Here I am inside a document inside Box. Check it out, this document inside Box contains social security numbers. So I'm gonna highlight all of these, right click and choose copy. Now remember, this is being proxied through Cloud App Security. When I hit copy, boom, action is blocked, it's, it's alerted, it's notified, it's audited, life is good, you're seen as a rock star. Let's take a look at this for Exchange Online. This is popular. If, I, you know, if I'm at a, a hotel kiosk and I'm on vacation at a theme park and I'm at the hotel and I just wanna check my work email, oh, here's an interesting attachment for product strategy. It looks to be internal, it looks to be sensitive. I'm gonna to try to download that attachment so I can view it. Uh-uh, you're on a non-managed device, we immediately block the download attachment, we audit in the, in the event log, in Cloud App Security, we alert on it, we notify you, and you're seen as a rock star, you save the day. Uh, you might wanna pause the video at this point and just explore this slide. This is kinda of talking about the architecture a little bit. But this is an amazing capability. Come to me at the business problem, let's talk about how we might be able to solve it using conditional access app control. Okay, let's move along here. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Um, if you're not, I totally understand. I expect you to come back and, and maybe uh, fast forward, divide this into chunks, however you wanna do this. But um, here on this slide, this is talking about protection against cloud threats and how cloud app security can help. So what I like to think about you know, is, is really detections across all of these apps and what that means. So threat and delivery persistence. We talked about OAuth. One of the, my favorite things is multiple failed login attempts to a suspicious app or to a particular app. Suspicious inbox rules. Hey, if I have a, a bad actor that's inside my environment, they've compromised somebody's mailbox and they're creating all these suspicious rules that then forwards that email out to a third party, boom, we can see that. Malware implanted in cloud apps. That's actually becoming pretty common. We can see that. Now here's something that's interesting is through the intelligence security graph and Microsoft's security capability as a security company, we can also see, are you coming from a compromised session? Is it a suspicious IP address? Is it coming from a known botnet? Is it an anonymous IP address from a Tor browser? Is it an infrequent country that maybe you don't usually travel to? Is it impossible travel? 
or are you logging in from a suspicious user agent? Again, Tor browser and non-standard um, uh, browsers. Many different factors that come into here to evaluate that risk. Now, here's the other thing is behavioral detection. So if Matt Sosman almost never empties his deleted items in Outlook, and he almost never shares files out of say OneDrive or Box as an example, that could be suspicious. Or he almost never downloads files. Or what if Matt's account gets compromised and the attacker is doing a mass download of everything in SharePoint or Teams? That's unusual. As you can see here, many different examples. And then malicious use of a privileged user, are they trying to impersonate somebody who has administrator uh, rights? This is amazing. Okay, so here's an example of doing some threat hunting where we saw some potential ransomware activity generated by an alert. When I opened up that alert, I do have some governance controls here around that user's account. I can see what has that user been up to. Looks like they've been uploading some files here. I can see, does, do those actions correlate with any other alerts and activities? Um, you can see a map of the world of where they're logging in from. Now, I think this is awesome because now we're talking about looking at different types of threat um, activity across these different cloud apps. And again, it's not about combing through thousands of events. It's about taking the signal from the noise and only surfacing the insightful, actionable things that you actually need to know about. And here you can see that's all surfaced here. 12 alerts, not 10,000. Easy to digest. Now, of course, we could prioritize these and there's some, some customization we can do, but there's also out-of-the-box policies you can create for threat protection. Okay, um, so I'm not, I'm not gonna go through this. Um, that's kind of a longer conversation. We'll save that for another video, but let's take a look at one of the demos here. So I mentioned the out-of-the-box threat protection policies. So when I go to create a new policy here, I can just choose threat detection, and then here's some out-of-the-box um, policies that were created. And then I can also uh, create some policies based on ransomware activity in that app, which is interesting. We'll do another video on that. Um, scan these cloud storage apps, and if they have any files in those apps that have been encrypted by, say, a, a, a crypto locker or they exhibit behavior of malware, then we can identify those files, put a block on them, we can quarantine them, we can delete them, we can do many different things on that, or just deny the ability for that user to even access the file, which is extremely interesting. Now, my favorite part of this is top users. Boom, let's go after Stella and Lizelle. Let's figure out what's happening here. After all, Lizelle is an admin. It looks like there's some suspicious behavior here, so let's figure out what's happening there. Okay, let's start to wrap up here, folks. So enterprise integrations, um, we'll do another video on this, but that's my favorite. I have a lot of favorite things you can't tell, but another favorite thing about this um, product is that I can export this to my SIM. So if I have a security operations center and I'm using say Azure Sentinel or a third-party SIM, let's ex export it. That allows me to create some playbooks and that kind of thing. I can automate some of this using APIs and PowerShell. We can integrate with third-party DLP solutions, but my absolute, absolute, absolute favorite is integration with Microsoft Flow. We've actually changed the name, it's Power Automate. And that allows me to create these custom playbooks. And when you think about that, the sky's the limit here. So here's a very basic example of, look, we get an alert, we're gonna send you an email, we're gonna send you a text message based on a certain condition. You know, maybe we post it in, um, you know, post it in Slack or Teams or wherever. But think about other things you could do. Hey, we get this alert, let's go out to the firewall and, and shut down a port, I'm making this up. Let's go out and you know we, we detected a user trying to do this abnormal behavior, let's shut down their account. Let's kick off 100 different response actions in real time based on the conditions of that alert. Again, sky's the limit here. It allows you to automate, it allows you to respond to these attacks faster. It's amazing stuff. And so we have a lot of connectors pre-built that integrate with tons of third-party apps, but you can also build your own. And if you start thinking about Azure Logic Apps, man, does it get interesting. So here's some example scenarios of what you might wanna do. I've seen a lot of partners, Microsoft partners that I work with do this, where they route um, these alerts and generate tickets and ticketing systems, where they maybe get input from a user's manager. I'll talk about that more in a minute. They disable the account in Azure AD they automatically block these unapproved apps in the firewall, so they tie them with the firewall. Many different 
things you could do, but take consideration of this. Pause the video, take a look at some of these. I challenge you to go out and try one of these. Kick the tires on it. Let me know in the comments. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Let's talk. Because again, this can have a lot of value and make you look like a rock star. So here's an example video here that let's, we're gonna play. So we're gonna block a risky app on the firewall. And so we're creating our policy in Cloud App Security. And when we find one of these risky apps in the environment, we're gonna send that alert to Microsoft Flow. And we've already created an alert here to then go out to a Palo Alto firewall and actually block those domain names and IP addresses on the firewall. Okay, so we create, create an alert, we send an email to the admin um, based on these conditions. And then um, if the alert contains cloud-application, we're gonna run a post command, HTTP post command out to the firewall. And so if I go to my Palo Alto here, this is then going to create that, um, that rule that then blocks that website. So let's run a test here. Bear with me. And we're gonna go into governance log and you're gonna see this in action. So here's where we found that data. This, this time it's coming from a Cisco Iron port. So we found that somebody is out there using an unsanctioned app. So we found tran eight transactions and two cloud apps. And we parsed through that log. And then we discovered that it violated a policy. And so we created an alert. And then now you're gonna see that alert uh, be forwarded, if you will, over to Microsoft Flow or Power Automate, as we now call it. So it's running right now. And so it's processing that alert. And this is interesting. So it's gonna post a message in Slack or in Teams. Uh, I probably would have done it in Teams. Uh, we're gonna then send an email to the admin. And now that email, check this out. I can have actions right inside the email. I can either block the app or I can um, do another action. So here I chose block. And now it's going to continue to process that flow. This is so cool. I challenge everybody watching this, go out and create some flows with Cloud App Security. This is so awesome. I'll probably do a few videos on this. I can think of a, some good examples. All right, we're still running that. So um, here's one where it succeeded. So you clicked on the, the link to block app in the, the fire or in the email, and then it's gone out to the firewall and it's actually blocked those domains and IP addresses. And here, this is just building out and showing you how that's configured and set up. Um, if you want to try this, just re-watch this video and you can see how we did it. So here's the actual rule on the Palo Alto and it's doing this HTTP post command. And here you can see if we do a refresh, we should, if the demo gods cooperate and stars align and it's a Monday evening, that the rule did get created. It's been a long day, had tons of meetings, but uh, I always enjoy making these videos for you. Hopefully, hopefully you find some value in this. I just, I love this stuff. Okay, and upon refresh, boom, there it is. There's the rule, MCAS auto block rule that's coming directly from that flow. How freaking cool is that? Um, that's, just, that's just amazing stuff. Okay, so, um, Let's start to wrap this up. Microsoft has made a, a, a huge investment in this product. And I hope you've seen that throughout the course of this, this presentation. Think about not everything, don't boil the ocean, but think about what's the top five things, maybe top 10 things I should start thinking about in my environment. Pause the video, take a look at this, write them down, challenge your peers, challenge your management, kick the tires on this thing, hit me up on LinkedIn in the comments below, and um, check out my videos. Let's make you a rock star. This thing can really, really help your environment. So here's what I want you to do. Go out and sign up for a trial of this. Kick the tires on it. Please, please, please. Read the technical document documentation out on docs.microsoft.com. Hook it up to Defender ATP. You can even do a uh, trial for that. Or upload a copy of your firewall logs through the Shadow IT Discovery. If you're running any of these third-party cloud apps or even just Office 365, connect it. In fact, you could probably get some developer accounts and some, some test accounts from some of these third-party cloud apps and connect it that way and just test it and kick the tires. 
enable some of these policies, play with it, try the information protection scenarios of automatically encrypting data in Office 365 or a third-party cloud. And take advantage of all these resources. Folks, there's so much information out there. It's just a matter of time, of day, right, to be able to consume it. But take advantage of this. You're in charge of your career. You're in charge of learning and growing. I'm telling you, cloud app security and just the CAS, the notion of a CASB all up, this can drastically change your IT career if you really understand this stuff and you go deep on it. I promise you. So here's some great resources. Uh, the one I really just want to call out is make sure you go out and join the MCAS community. Tons of people out there just like you and me having conversations about this. Okay, look, again, I always enjoy making these videos. We went over here a little bit on time. We're at 40 minutes. Um, I, I, I love doing this for you. Um, I don't do this for my day job. I do it for all of you who subscribe to this channel and who watch these videos. Um, let me know how I'm doing. Give me feedback, put in the comments, send me a private note on LinkedIn. If you have suggestions for future videos, let me know. I do these for you. I wanna help you. All right, folks, well, it's, um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you again, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.